In this video, we're going to look at the OSI reference model. The OSI reference model is an abstract model of networking. It divides communication over a network into seven distinct layers, each with their own protocols. And it's the most popular model used to represent how applications and devices communicate with each other over the internet. Now, it's not the only model, and it's not even the most accurate model, but it is the most widely accepted, and you should know how it works. The OSI model is a protocol reference model, and that means it gives an abstract view of the network. It groups network functionality into layers, starting with the physical connection medium at the bottom, like Ethernet cables, and ending with the software application layer at the top. Each layer is going to provide services to the layers above it, and each layer is going to use the services of the layers below it. And each of these layers is going to have its own set of protocols it uses to make the network operate. So, what's happening when two applications talk to each other over the internet? Well, we can view that communication at the highest level of abstraction as the dotted line in this figure. The yellow boxes are the applications, and the dotted line represents the information that's exchanged between them. But this doesn't tell us anything about the protocols used or the data that travels through the network. The OSI model views the application layer as sitting on top of six other layers with the physical link at the bottom. The physical link is the Ethernet cable or the wireless connection. And yes, wireless connections are part of the physical layer in this model. So the two stacks on the end are machines that hold the applications that are communicating. The medium-sized stacks in the middle might be routers, and the smallest stacks could be a bridge or a switch. Notice that the intermediate devices only need to employ the lower level protocols when they're handling the data. They don't care about what's happening at the application layer. The arrows that connect each of the stacks represent data that is traveling through the physical layer. Okay, let's look at the layers of the OSI model and what they do. Starting with the bottom layer first, the physical layer. The function of the physical layer is simply to deliver bits over a physical or wireless link. In the physical layer, you need to worry about how a bit is going to get from one place to another. How are you going to represent that bit? Is it going to be analog or is it going to be digital? Are you going to use a wire? Are you going to use light? Are you going to use radio signals? These are all things that you have to worry about in the physical layer. But fortunately, they're not things that we have to worry about. The data link layer groups the bits into frames and actually addresses them so that the data can get from one node to another within a local area network. In a local area network, you typically share physical media. You plug your cables into a hub, for example, and need mechanisms that help you get the data where it's supposed to go within that local network. So the addresses at this layer are for local machines only. They are not IP addresses. That happens in the next layer, which is the network layer. The network layer connects the data links, or local area networks, together and therefore it becomes concerned with inter-networking. This is the internet layer, so as you might expect, this is where the internet protocol resides. The transport layer is concerned with delivering data from operating system to operating system, not just from computer to computer. When the data gets to the operating system, it should be ready to use. So the transport layer is responsible for reassembling the packets, if necessary, into the usable data that was sent. 
This is also where error checking occurs, if error checking is going to be used. On the other end of things, the sending end of things, the transport layer breaks down the message to be sent into the packets that travel across the network. The transport layer is where TCP and UDP perform their functions. The session layer controls the opening and closing of connections between computers. It manages those connections and so is concerned with the sockets and the ports on your machine. The presentation layer translates between application and network formats. So this is where encryption services reside. The presentation layer is where the operating system presents that network to you, the software developer. So this is one of the layers we're going to be very much concerned with in this course. This is how our application sees the network. And finally, we have the application layer. This is where most of our efforts as application developers will be focused because, after all, we're building an application. And the application is the interface through which the end user communicates over the network. Okay, that's a brief overview of the functionality of the different layers of the OSI model. Let's take a quick look at the protocols that each of these layers use, focusing on the protocols that we will be using in order to build our internet software applications. Again, let's go from the bottom up. At the physical layer, we've got our Ethernet cable protocols, 10 base T and 100 base TX. Uh, V90 is a modem protocol. Uh, we've got wireless protocols here, and, and we've got a lot more. At the data link layer, we have protocols related to our local area network, like Ethernet, Token Ring, FDDI, which is for optical fiber, uh, ATM for voice and video, and, and many more here too. The network layer, as we mentioned, is where we have the internet protocol. The transport layer is where we have TCP, our connection-oriented protocol, and UDP, our connectionless protocol. The session layer is where various socket implementations reside. SSL is a common form of encryption that is used over the internet and it occurs in the presentation layer. Finally, the application layer is filled with protocols that are important to our application. The one we'll be working with most is HTTP because we're going to focus on web applications, but it also includes FTP for file transfer, SMTP for email, and many, many others. Of all these layers, we'll be most concerned with the top three. The application layer, the presentation layer, and the session layer. We only care about the transport layer insofar as we have to specify whether we want our data to be sent using TCP or UDP. Once that's done, we don't really have to think about it anymore. And everything below the transport layer will take care of itself. Okay, that's a quick overview of the OSI reference model. In the next video, we'll talk about distributing computing models like client-server and peer-to-peer. -peer.